Welcome to episode 7 of the Confounded Chronicles. In this week's episode, we're going to build an air blast thing. So the first step in mounting my little air blast thing to the side of the mill was to find a position to mount it. Uh, there was a little safety switch on the side of the mill that had uh, came with the mill. It had a little guard on it so that if you move the guard out of the way, the spindle would shut down. A long time ago, I took that off. Actually, I took that off before I even ran the mill once. And I just connected the switch to normally close so I could continue to use it. And I've never had a need to take that whole switch panel off until now, because I want those stock mounting locations. So here I removed those two wires from the switch, soldered them together, we'll heat shrink it, and then we'll just stuff it back into the casting there. The proper way to do this would probably be bridge it right on the board um, in the little speed controller in the upper left of the frame, but I just didn't feel like doing that right now. So we're going to solder it together and it can just live inside the casting right there. There's loads of room, nothing sharp inside, should be just fine. Next step is to build a mounting block for the little air fittings. So what I did here is put a piece of rough cut aluminum on here and using the CNC mill in kind of a manual fashion, I'm just going to clean up one edge, take some offsets, do some measurements and basically get the stock to the size I wanted. I want this bar at about 3.5 inches, so I'm going to use the diameter of the tool and numbers and, and math to figure out where I need to jog the mill to stop. Um, instead of touching off, basically all I'm going to do is run the mill and move it back and forth until I actually cut one side. Now I know that face is exactly uh, 0.1875 with a 3 8 inch, 3, 0 0.37, I can't say 3 8 0.375 inch cutter. If I move it half the width, obviously I'm right over the the center of the part so anyways move to the other side clean it up to 3.5 inches and and we're done this is not an ultra critical part you could honestly do this part with a hacksaw this is just more for visual appeal and to get my next dimensions so i can work off a, a fixed dimension checking it i was about two thou off um which is more than more than enough for this purpose next up would be to drill some counter bores for those screws i wanted to use a stock mounting screws um so what we're going to use is, is a 3 8 inch drill. Turns out a 3 8 oh, why can't I say 3 8 0.375 inch end mill worked perfectly for a counter bore. So we're going to run that back and forth uh, through the two parts. The parts were 2.6 inches apart, so it was a nice easy measurement to move the mill to and drill down. That's the awesome bit about CNC control. Normally I would do this with the quill handle. When you're under CNC control, you can set exactly how fast you want things to move. So you have a nice, dependable, predictable chip. Next, we're going to spot the bottom of those counterboard holes to drill our clearance holes for the machine screws. And I gave it a little extra room just in case uh, the casting holes were off, or maybe even my measurements were off. Ooh. Same thing, spot on this side and clearance hole drill through. Nothing too fancy and worked perfectly. Now, basically the easy part is done. Uh, I'm going to knock the sharp edges off for where the drill exited and the front edges off too, just to keep it friendly for the fingers. The next part is to drill the airline hole that's going to go clean through the part. Um, I'm picking up the edges a little more accurately here because I have to do this operation from both sides. I have a drill bit that's more than long enough to make it through that part. It's only 3.5 inches, but I don't have the Z room um, with the combination of the vise on the mill, the part standing up, the Jacobs chuck, I just, I ran out of room. So uh, we're going to basically spot it from both sides and then drill through and hope that we hit fairly close, um, that the built bit doesn't walk too far going through the part. I expected this to be a little bit out, so I'm drilling it under size. I want that hole to be quarter inch uh, at the final size, so I'm just drilling it one size under. It's some fractional size and I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. It's smaller than a quarter inch, put it that way. Once again, drilling under CNC control is super easy. So we swap up to a larger bit. This is for the NPT fitting. It's a quarter inch NPT fitting. Uh, so we'll drill the clearance hole for that and then we'll go ahead and tap it right after. This one's bird nesting like crazy because, well, I'm, I'm just kind of manually forcing it through. Normally a nice peck cycle would help with that bird nesting, but such is not the case. So I did the other side off camera and our hole was nearly perfect. Uh, maybe hit a f maybe five thou uh, misalignment between the bottom. So that was perfect. More than, uh, more than workable in this situation. I ran the quarter inch drill bit through it and it cleaned up the sides nice and smooth. Next up, we're going to tap for the uh, little NPT compression fitting and as well as a lock line uh, that's going to mount on the bottom of this part. The first little test showed that I 
basically just have to tap more. Uh, this is not a bottoming tap, it's just a, a standard uh, starting tap, whatever whatever the middle one was. And uh, so I just had to, I drilled that hole a lot further so that I, the tap could enter significantly further into the part. Here I'm just trying to grab the orange fitting on the lock line, but it turns out the blue hose is actually a little bit larger, so I did it off camera, I used a wrench, and tighten that up properly. Next up, we'll see if everything fits. And of course it fits, because because I already know what happened. I've, I've watched this video, I've done it. Uh, everything worked perfectly, snugged up everything nice and tight, and the lock line is awesome. I was gonna use a magnet mount for this lock line, but a nice rigid mount is sometimes just a better way to go about things, especially if you wanna kinda leave it somewhat unattended. That's, that's probably for the best. Next up was to run the quarter inch line, and I'm just zip tying it to the big nest of wires that comes down from the stepper motors. I'm going to run it over to my compressor and it has a little valve with a shut off just so I can help control the airflow to the little air nozzle bluer. And that's about it. But does it work? Well, you watch. Yay! Of course it works. I. It would have worked without the airline, but it's just much, much nicer to blow those chips out of the way. You get a much better finish because you're not recutting chips. And uh, most of my work's in aluminum anyway, so that should work awesomely well. It blows chips everywhere in the workshop now, but that's a small price to pay for a better service finish. But wait, there's more. I found this really cool bottle. Um, I was actually just buying parts for this video, and I came across it. It's kind of like a recyclable air aerosol bottle. Uh, it has a little Schrader valve on the bottom. You can unscrew the whole container. You can fill it up with whatever kind of coolant you want. Uh, in this case, I just have a little bit of oil that I use for my lathe. And then you can pressurize it up to like 100 PSI and spray oil everywhere. Uh, I keep it at a really low pressure, so I can just kind of spray oil where I need it. But I thought it was really neat, so thought I'd show you guys. Anyways, that's a shop. That's a video for this week. It's getting quite cozy in here, but now, now I feel like we're, we're getting really set up. We're getting to a point where I think we can start making things. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you next week. Take care. Bye.